But what, what I do when, I, when I'm teaching about certain, certain time periods in history, or at least events, we'll say events, what I have my students do is deconstruct the event. Give me some of the major things that occurred that led to that event, event unfolding. Let's name them. And let's see what are some of the unintended consequences that came out of these different combinations of factors. Because those things were not anticipated. The fact that Robinson's mother chose to move to California as opposed to Detroit, New York, Cleveland, Kansas City, that gave him a different opportunity that could not be predetermined. No one could imagine the fact that she brought him up in an integrated neighborhood where she herself was the example, was going to be the X factor as it relates to Jackie Robinson in some ways becoming that person. But these other factors had to also uh, play out. He had to go to UCLA. He had to play on integrated teams in, at Pasadena Junior College. He had to meet Joe Lewis at Fort Riley. And Joe Lewis had to become heavyweight champion and, and garner the, uh, the love of a nation uh, with his fights with Max Schmeling in 38. So all these other things we couldn't anticipate. Things had to unfold the way they did, and people had to anticipate opportunity and take advantage of it when it came. But there is no way we could ever have guessed Jackie Robinson would become the person he was and, and the person we still admire. So, you know, it's, it's hard for me in some ways to teach history in this kind of chronological kind of fashion. Because history, yes, it, by date it may work that way, by hour by hour, but there are things that precede that moment that kind of set up the opportunity for something to unfold differently than you've maybe anticipated. So what I like to do is draw a timeline. Yes, these things happen, this is the date. But what happened over here, over here, that primed us to take advantage of the moment when it, ar when it, when it arises, when it arose. So that, that's kind of the way in which I approach these different historical moments. With Robinson, you know, no one really knows that he was, uh, he was in a little gang when he was a kid, Pepper Street Gang. And you know, some of the information that I've read said that he was the leader of this little gang. And they weren't a violent gang, they stole apples. Right? They ran through cherry orchards and you know, pulled cherries off of trees, things of that nature. But one person in his neighborhood said, you're going down the wrong road, young man. And that one person probably made a big difference in his life. So it really matters, when we think about how these things unfold, it matters who the people are in our lives. It could be that one thing that changes everything. Robinson has enough people in his life helping him make decisions so that when he has to make choices on his own, he's making them within the context of still moving forward, even though there are challenges and obstacles that will, that will arise. And there's not one way in which to lead people. There are multiple ways to freedom. And I think that both of these individuals juxtapose you know, against one another, they demonstrate that. That one, of course, does it in baseball, but it's not really about baseball. One, of course, does it in marching, but it's not about marching. There are these demonstrations of one's ability to claim your humanity, your manhood, and your citizenship. You just happen to have an audience watching you. I think Jackie Robinson is underappreciated for his civil rights, um, not just record, but his significance. And when we think about this idea of him integrating baseball, we've reduced it just to that, just to baseball. When in fact, he is such a huge figure in the ability of an individual to stand up, not for only what he believes in, but for what he believes other people want him to believe in or to represent. Robinson himself is initiating a lot of these integration, uh, this, these conversations about integration through his athletic competition, but what he's doing more than anything else, he's challenging his right to speak up as a human being and as an American citizen. And so when you have Dr. King and, 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 and Jackie Robinson coming together and you put those two uh, individuals in the same room, who's learning from who? Is King learning about, you know, not necessarily civil disobedience, but how to be patient? Is he learning uh, more compassion? Is he learning the techniques? Because Robinson got it from the best of them when he was playing baseball. He received the death threats, which King would receive later on in his life. So at what point can we say that they both learn from one another? And, and Robinson, in fact, maybe inspired even more uh, because he knew uh, the way. He had... Um, he had gone through it. He had run the gauntlet.